bunnies <laughs> like carrots. But if you're not allowed to hit me, okay. So congratulations to Alan Miller. Yay! Thank you so much. Well, I'm Andy Keats Howard Cox. Thank you very I'm much. off now to boil a golden <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
No, they don't. Well, no, no. Um, yes, this is the late night phone in. This is your chance to talk about the things that are important to you or that you want, you know, just want to get off your chest or something that you think might amuse us. We like that when you make us laugh. And um, give us a call on 0344 499 1000. That's 0344 499 1000. Calls will be charged at your network rate. You can also, I'm not going to say the WhatsApp thing. Because we still no, it does work. Oh, does it work? Oh, it work. you can send us a WhatsApp then. You can send us a WhatsApp as well send if you want to, to the same number. Or you can text the word talk, then put your message and send it to 87 Travel 2. Or you can just at us in X Twitter. I still keep calling it Twitter. You can just at us at Talk TV and we'll, we'll get it on the screen. There you go. All the ways of communicating with us this evening. Well, do you know something? This has been a weird week for me, and I'm just going to throw this out before we go to the calls. Look, my mother uh, was sick with cancer, so was my dad. So my dad was diagnosed with cancer when I was a little boy, and um, and he still is alive and Stan, going strong. I oh didn't yes, know that Stan yeah, had oh, cancer. Big, big Stan. Uh, I think he got cancer in probably about 1987, and has continued to go through all of these years. My mother unfortunately died of lung cancer. I was very struck this week. Um, by what happened to the Princess of Wales. And I just want to be clear to everybody, before people panic, first of all, what she had was a major abdominal operation. I think most of us can guess what the major abdominal operation was, not least because not all of it was removed, but what was removed in terms of the tissue, some of it tested positive for cancer. Therefore, she's gone on a preventive course of chemotherapy. It's just shocking because she's so young. I think that's... It's just so shocking, isn't it? Now, now when my mother died, she was old. And, and I was 40 or whatever it was. I actually, actually it was after my 40th birthday. You're still your mum, though. Yeah, of course, of course. I wonder what it's like if you've got a child that's 10, you've got a child who's 8, you've got a child who's 5, and you have to talk to them about it. We've had loads of brilliant calls on the special show I did yesterday. Well, I've done work with the charity called Winston's Wish as well, and they look after children who've lost parents, basically. A charity Amazing. that supports children who've lost... And apparently, the way that children do deal with grief like that is that, and bad news is that they dip in and they dip out, so they, they, you know, they might feel sad for a bit, and then they want to go and play a game or whatever, so yeah. you know, that's quite normal for them to just dip in and out of the grief like that. So here's what I want to do tonight. I want to say, as usual, you can talk about absolutely anything you want to do, but if you've got any advice for the Princess of Wales, if you've got any thoughts about cancer, if you want to encourage people to go to get tested for cancer. I got told off last night by James Whale for being over 40 and not having been tested for anything at uh, all. I got told off by him. If you want to tell me off I've for things like that. I've not, well, I've had smears, obviously. But, but, but I've not had anything. Oh, and he said, he said, and I won't do that, I'll try and do the voice. He goes, yeah, but how old are you? And you've not been tested for you anything. You don't think, do you? you I'll think. tell you what, what she has done, which we, I just think is wonderful, is put a huge, big spotlight on it. And it's and that it can only be a positive thing. So, and I, I, and I, I respect her privacy, absolutely. But I also do think, you know, she she's, lives a very privileged life. And if and, and she's the kind of person you know, you feel I don't know her but that you'd feel that she'd want she wants to help people what like and she, she closed the speech well, with her job her you job know, her other job people don't suffer in silence. her job is her job is as a PR person for the country yeah. really so all of those big palaces and whatever she doesn't really live in she lives in a very very nice house yeah. called Adelaide cottage not a cottage by the way <laughs> but but she lives in a very nice house but all of those amazing rooms and whatever that's there for the public that's yeah. not really there for them to live in but anyway i'll tell you what we'll do why don't we get straight to the call so we've started this off with bereavement and cancer and trying to talk about this country but you can take it whatever way it's going to go yeah, so john in newcastle is going to start john you're on talk tv uh, hello good evening uh, my point is that uh, i'm looking at this paper in front of us and it's actually from the reform party and uh, it tells us, you know, under the circumstances of our people getting poorer, as it is, understandably, with uh, the heating and everything else. And it, it, it goes on to say on one of the sheets that our civil servants struggle to give away the billions of pounds each year. They struggle to do that, which is, I find, amazing when we have food banks, when we have children getting vouchers for food. And then it goes on to say... The money is given to areas of the world, also to the EU, the Euro 
European Union. Yeah, of course. And our global uh, bodies to help spend it are, are also included. We would also reduce the foreign aid by 50%. When will the people of this country be looked after better than what mm. they are? Because well, can I, can I tell you something? You yeah. look at, and, and I've talked about this plenty of times, the World Health Organization with that fake doctor, Dr. Tedros, not a real medical doctor, even though he calls himself, he's an Ethiopian communist uh, who <laughs> received a doctorate in another area of science, not medicine, first ever leader of the World Health Organization to be not a medical doctor, and yet he styles himself Dr. Tedros. We are wasting our time with this stupidity. We're spending all this money and we're supporting all these international organisations that are dreadful. But, John, can I tell you the worst one? The worst one of them all is the United Nations Sex for Food programme. That in Haiti, when UN operatives uh, demanded that, uh, that parents pimp out their children to UN aid workers in exchange for food. That was one of the most despicable acts ever. It has been proven, the, the gallery are panicking at the moment, yeah, but it has, been, it has been shown to be true. And unfortunately, the UN will not lift diplomatic immunity on those people accused. I say to the UN, if you're going to be a serious international organisation, return those people that are accused in Haiti to trial in Haiti. I think that the, 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 this was the whole plan with Brexit, wasn't it, John? I think that that was the main feeling that people felt like everything was always going out of the country, out of the country. I think that, you know, it's, it, it's not... Yeah. The, problem, the problem we've it? got, John, is that time and time again, these international organisations, they go, oh, all right, they're a little bit corrupt, but they're better than nothing. In the case of the World Health Organisation and its governance of COVID with that fake doctor... It would have been better if we hadn't had a World Health Organization. But by the way, what they're now saying is let's even let's make the World Health Organization even more powerful with its fake oh. doctor as the leader. John, I'll give you 30 seconds, then we're going to move on. Uh, yes, just one point more. Uh, when we left the European Union, and I'm a Brexiteer, although I love Europe, obviously. Yeah, me too. Uh, we, VAT was one of the major issues that when we got out. The VAT would be scrapped. Yep. Well, I've got no time for this government because it didn't scrap it yep. and it's failed in other things. Yep. I've got no time for the Labour government and I've been on the, on the planet for a few decades it's now. It's funny, John, how they just don't do what they say they're going to do, isn't it? I'm, I'm, really, I'm, really, I'm really hoping at the next election all of them lose. John, thank you so much. <laughs> Steve, thank you, John. Steve is in Walsall. Steve, you're on Talk TV. Hello, guys. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. I was uh, I, I was on the show last week, but uh, I got cut off at the last minute because you run out of time. I so remember, Steve. I'll, I'll stick to the format. It was on about paranormal experiences. Yeah. Well, I've had two beauties. Go on. A few years ago, I used to drive gra big British uh, classic motorcycles. And uh, I was in bed one night, asleep, obviously. obviously. And all of a sudden, I saw myself on one of my motorcycles driving down the road. And all of a sudden, it went, everything went black. And then everything went light. And I saw myself rising up, looking at my smashed up motorcycle and me dead on the floor. And I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And I heard a man say, he's had it, he has. And then I woke up, mm -hmm. stopped up in bed, startled. And I was really startled. I run downstairs and my wife followed me. She said, what's the matter? And I told her what had happened. She says, you know what that is, don't you? I said, I don't. I said, it's a paranormal, uh, out-of-body experience. It's and not, it's a dream. It's a nightmare, is what that is, Steve. If you went in there and you your motorbikes again, I will kill you. And I haven't rode a motorcycle from that day to this. I mean, not riding a motorcycle right. is wise advice. It and, is good advice. And I do think that your wife Being was right. Being made of skin and bone and all that, as opposed to made of metal. I do think that your wife was right to use the excuse <laughs> of your nightmare. I've told my boys, no <laughs> motorbikes. Steve, 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 I think your wife loves you very much, but I don't <laughs> think that she believes you had an out-of-body <laughs> paranormal experience. Anyway, there's another one. I, 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 no, Steve, we've had enough now. We've had enough. We've had, no, we've had enough. Thank you so much, Steve. <laughs> I'll tell you what we're going to tell you about Steve. Steve's wife loves him.
And when he woke up and he went, oh, I can't believe that. I dreamed... I dreamt I, was... I died in a motorcycle. I said, that's it. I told you, sell your yeah, bike. Yeah, and I, I want a new handbag. Yeah, that... that... <laughs> Oh, that's right, Steve. Trust me. That proves it's... That's what happened. That is not... Steve, that's not a nightmare. That's a paranormal premonition that you now need to sell the motorbike yep. and buy a pram. A conservatory. Right? And <laughs> the kids... And, 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 and you'll be all right. Yeah. Tell you what, Steve, you have got a good wife. Yeah. Keep hold of her. Um, but you haven't had a very good paranormal experience. experience. <laughs> OK, Paula, take over. Take over. Hello, Paula. Paula you're through to talk TV talk radio. Hello, guys. Are you OK? We're good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Good. Just um, touching on the point of Catherine. Yeah. Um, it's so sad. It is it's sad, so isn't sad. it? I got a letter, I got an appointment through today saying, right, you've got to come for your cancer checkup, um, MRI scan. And it's like, it just never leaves you. I had no. kidney cancer. Right. Three months ago, and I had a tumour on my left kidney. Okay. Um, and I had to go to Jimmy's in Leeds because I was too unwell. I had too many underlying health issues to have it done by a robotic surgeon in Bradford. OK. Um, and I still can't feel the left side of me uh, thing because they've damaged all the nerves. But hey-ho. But, yeah, they, they, you've got to do what you've got to do, haven't you, Paula? Yeah, you just have, yeah. And it, yeah when, when I saw that on the TV um, this week, I just... It's My very dad. upsetting, Paul, isn't Paul. it? My dad's currently waiting on some blood tests and no one wants to say this, the C word because you just don't want to say well, it. Well, James, James Whale said last night we shouldn't call it the C word, we should call it cancer. Yeah. And, and embrace the fact that one in two of us are going to get it. Clearly there's been yeah. a major problem yeah. with um, people not being I mean, treated. I mean, it's mad. Well, look, Paul, at the, look at Jade Goody's story because that really... It really, really upsets me that even now I, oh, yeah, I get no. I, I get yeah, find myself crying yeah, whenever yeah. I watch anything. She left those two little boys. Oh, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going. I know. Yeah, but she found out while she was actually oh, working on television. Good. She found out while she was in the Indian Big Brother house. Yeah, yeah, they're they so did. Handsome now though. Yeah. Oh, and sorry, they're a sorry, credit. Sorry, 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 they sorry. are a credit. To sorry, can we, can we stop? There. Can we stop for a second? We've done it again. Mm. What? Remember when Chuck talks in our ears? Funny. We don't know yeah, what he's saying it. out on her. No, I no, it's okay. I I repeated it. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's okay. Don't Jade worry. Jade Goody found I out live it. on TV. She did. Jade Goody was in the Big Brother house in India at the time. Um, they did. Well, to be fair, it was obviously quite. Um, time oh, sensitive, it. wasn't it? But there's two yeah, issues, Paula. Yeah. Paula, let me ask you this question. There are two issues, aren't there? There's the cancer yeah. thing, and I lost my mother, and it's very sad to lose I know, any I just parent. Heard you saying, Andrea, and I'm really sorry. Well, uh, yeah, absolutely, but 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 always remember something. The bigger concern for most mums that have phoned up, and fairly obviously, I'm not a mother, and and I'm not making that to make, not saying that to make a joke, but you yeah, know, no. most mums are thinking eight, ten, five years old when you are ill i mean 42 mm. is a ridiculous age to be sick and her mother is obviously yeah. still very much so she's been losing a child i lost my child just before she was two years old of meningitis no parent should ever have to go through that ever never it's unnatural mm. it's unnatural paula um what would be your message to the princess of wales if she was watching or listening which by the way you never she know she often does <laughs> You know, I would just want to send all my love and what a lovely, lovely way to pronounce, you know, she sort of put it to the public. You know, she always did it with grace. She she did. She Every, everything did. she does, she does with grace. OK, Paula. Th apparently she is the most popular member of her family. Paula, thank you so much. <laughs> I will say one thing. Am I allowed to admit Go this? On. I am allowed to admit this. Um, every major organisation, whether it be the Prime Minister's office, whether it be Buckingham Palace, whether it be Kensington Palace, actually what they do is they do something called media monitoring. So in reality, they all get a summary of everything that's put onto every uh, broadcast 
broadcast outlet in the country. And so I'm not saying that the King watches this. I'm not saying that the Prince of Wales watches this. I'm not saying that the Princess of He's Wales watches this. Did. However, however, a summary of it will be circulated to them because that's the way the system works. Did you know that? No. Oh, of course but it I does. I love it. When I worked... Hiya, when, Kate. You'll we'll be all right. We'll, when I'm, I'm praying for you. No, when I worked in politics, what they used to do was they used to automatically sift through it all with, like, AI... So oh, they that's could. So weird. I'm not joking. So they go. Well, this is a reference to Bob Jones. I this is a reference I to. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So, so if we were to say now, let's pick out a member. Well, let's say um, I think Michael Gove is a really good bloke. He will. That will come up in his media monitoring tomorrow. Will it? I'm not joking. Is that why you drop these random references? Yeah, that's in? why I keep talking. About, I knew it. That's I why, knew it. That's why I keep talking about Alan Mabber, a bloke I hate. Okay, <laughs> I still hate you, Alan. Okay, so, <laughs> Sarah is in London. Sarah. Oh, who we got? Who we going to? Oh, uh, so, oh, sorry, Sarah's, Sarah's husband, Sarah's Bob. husband Bob. Bob. Okay. Hi, Bob. Hello there. Hello. How are you? No, uh, trogging on, Tal. Yeah, not so bad. Good. And you? Yeah, we're OK. We're still here, aren't we? We're still here, Bob. Always <laughs> <laughs> good, then. I was just wondering why Andre's hairstyle looked like an aircraft carrier coming towards us. <laughs> I like it. It's, it's the... It's the Jedward's dad style. Right, so, the... so... So, honestly, Bob... Bob, I have an argument with the um, with the makeup people. So when I walk around my own area, I look like Don King, right? It's just all over the place. He really they, does. They, they force me to turn it into Tintin. Something. Right. But I you do look like... I just hate cutting it. You do it. look, let's just say, dishevelled. Yeah, but the thing is with me... When you come in. Yeah, but the thing is with me, right... Is that just so you don't get recognised? No, I'm and, like, 44. I'm 44, right? So I, I've got... That is Are my you own. Are forty-four? That's my own hair. You're younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I turned forty-five in December. You're not forty-five until when is it? April. Is it the end of April? April, April, three years time. No, I'm forty. I think I'm forty-four. When's your birthday? Nineteen. Uh, sorry. Why don't 19th you know? Of April, Wait, 19th. Right. This is the mad. When we met, this guy doesn't know his own birthday. No, I'm not interested. And then his mad excuse was something about politics and how yeah. the time yeah. that they vote and yeah. how it, so he changed it to May or something yeah. random. Yeah, so I have two Who? birthdays. You're not the Queen, I have two You're birthdays. not the Queen. I have two birthdays. Don't, don't, don't make that allegation. Um, <laughs> it's, it's uncouth. Sorry, uh, we've not let Bob speak. No, Go on. no, 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 no. Let me explain you what's happened. To... Say about your hair, happened. but maybe you wanted to my, say something My else. actual birthday is the 19th of April, but I have an official birthday there we go. on the 19th of May. <laughs> the reason is because the 19th of April is two weeks before the local there we go. general elections. And so when I celebrated his birthday on the 19th of April, which, don't worry... No, I'll, 19th of May. You I'll be it. back. No, oh, did I, no, I did it on the 19th of April, and you said, how do you know that's my actual birthday? Yeah, well, it's not And you know how I knew? Because I asked you your star sign. I have my I have my official birthday on the nineteenth. May everyone knows. I'll that. be back, by the way, from Saudi on the nineteenth of April, so we will be able to. No, we won't be able we to celebrate be able to it celebrate. on my actual birthday. Yeah. That is a private occasion for the family, whereas the official public occasion That's a load of is the nineteenth. That is the most ridiculous <laughs> load of rubbish you've ever said in your life. How important do you think you are? Very. <laughs> Very. <laughs> Bob. He needs knocking down a peg or two, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm just going to drink my drink. In, in the words of my grandmother, I was just... You started this, Bob. In the words of my grandmother, I was just having a wee cup of tea in the corner. I was causing no trouble to anyone. Mm. So, did anything else you wanted to talk about, Bob, or was that it, just Andre's hair? That was just it. Was just his hair. I, thank you very much for calling in. I'll tell you what I'm, will I'll tell you what I'm willing to do. I'll what tell you. are you willing to do? Shave it off? <gasps> I am willing to shave it off. Should I'm willing to shave. No, I'm willing. I'm willing. Buzz I'm willing. Cut, I'm, I'm only, cut. But I'm only willing to shave. I'm only willing to shave off if we ever raised a significant amount for charity. Now, not not a fiver or a tenner or ten grand. It would have to be an enormous amount of money. But I will tell you, I would shave it off for charity. I would. I would. But I'll tell you, I if, would you if you think it's fifty quid here and ten quid there, I think not. <laughs> Barbara's in Cheshire. Barbara, you're on Talk TV. <gasps> Hello, Barbara. Oh, hi, Danielle. Hello, how are you? You look divine. Thank you. I'm you a bit shiny. I look like a gorgeous. I look like a trophy from an awards no, ceremony. No, you don't. You she look is a beautiful. trophy. <laughs> you look beautiful, Danielle. Thank you, Barbara. I, 
Hi, Andre. Hello. Hi. Um, I just wanted to tell you about my father. Um, he died when he was 49 and I was 11. And he was a very strong influence in my life. And this particular year, I, was, I think I was about 10, and Christmas was coming up. And um, they were finding, they were asking me what I would like for Christmas. Right. But it was all the rage at the time for these Cinderella watches. It was a watch with a dial and a, a picture of Cinderella on the yeah. And was it a skirt? Yeah. Pardon? Was it her skirt? Is that, am I, or have I got it wrong? No, no. Cinderella. Yeah, but did she have, like, the big skirt on the, I'm sure yes. I remember yes, that. Yes, she had a big, yes. Yeah. yeah. Big, and it was sort of green and yeah. um, and sort of silvery. Right. Anyway, um, oh, my friends, I had about about four friends, you know, and we were we were all going to we were all going to have this Cinderella watch. Yeah. So anyway, when when Christmas Day came, I was all excited, and um, my father gave me this um, present. And he, he was excited, and he said, uh, "Oh, I've got you something special." And he gave me this present, and I opened it, and I couldn't believe what it was. Go on. It wasn't a Cinderella watch. Okay. What was it? Was it was a Snow White watch. Now I'd never heard of a Snow White watch. Oh. Okay. So, so I thought. I, you know, I told him that I looked, I, I did love it, but I was so disappointed because oh, I was different I could, from everybody yeah. else, you see. So, anyway, my father, I, I, I wore it over the holiday and he said, Are you going to take it to school, you know, to show your friends? No. And I said, Yes, yes, I'll okay. take it. Okay. And um, he said, Well, let me know how you get on, you know. So, anyway, I took it, and the girl, and I was, I was dreading showing them. Yeah. Because they all had They all had things. Cinderella. And they said, and what have you got, Barbara? Let's see yours. Have you got the same? And I said, no, no, I haven't. And they said, well, what have you got? I said, I've got a Snow White watch. And they said... At first, they laughed and they said, Snow White? I've, I've never heard of Snow White watches. Where have you got that from? You know, the market or, you know, like... Yeah, yeah. kids are know, cruel, aren't nasty, they? But yeah, yeah. Kids, how yeah. And I said, no, I said, I got it from my, from my father. My, fa my, my dad gave it to me. Well, when they saw this Snow White watch, oh, their faces... They could not believe how beautiful it was. And they said, oh, it's gorgeous, that. Oh, I wish I'd got, I wish I'd asked for really? it. Really? Yes. Because it was said, different well, from everybody ask. else's. Yes. I said, I didn't ask for one. I, I wanted a Cinderella. They said, oh, I'm, oh I wish I'd, I wish the Barbara, that is, one. honest, that is so weird, because, you know, you and I are a bit spiritually connected, and I had a very similar conversation, stroke argument, with my eldest son about standing out and being different. And and you know what it's like? Kids just want to fit in. They want to well, be the same as everyone else. They want to fit in. It's imperative to do. And I was compl I was like your dad. I always say, no, you want to stand out. You want to be different. You want to be unique. You want to be memorable. But but kids, initially, the, the, the gut instinct is to just fit in, isn't it? Well, I'll tell, I tell you what, I tell you, Barbara, thank you so much. I'll tell you what my mother did, which I've got a great deal of respect for now. I went to St Edward's College and it cost my mum and dad a lot of money to send me there, yeah. private school. Oh, yeah. Um, but actually, 60% of the boys there were on assisted places, which where the government gave them some. I was the last kid to get rid of the plimsolls because the school rules said you had to wear, you know, those plimsolls plastic shoes? Yeah. Which is what I wore. All the other kids wore trainers. And my mum said to me, because she'd been to a posh school, but she couldn't afford hockey shoes, so she had to do it in her bare feet. Right. She said, I'll tell you something, they'll always remember 
the little boy who was the one that didn't have to wear the posh trainers because his parents were full fee. What do you? I don't understand. Because you have to explain that to me in the break. We'll talk later. Okay. Yeah. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to Talk Radio Talk TV. I'm Danielle. What you're looking at me for? I'm Danielle Nichols. This is Andre Walker. The beautiful, <laughs> amazing. And I should have coughed in the break. And I want to say hello to our friends Alan and George who are watching at home and say, apparently, we're the most glamorous couple on TV. Apparently. It's because I, I do look like a trophy. I, I look like an award today. I understand George Richardson, the photographer, has seen a couple of pairs before. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Right, so the producers are insisting that we talk about Iceland. Right, let me let, just let, tell no, you a little no, story. Wait, this wait, needs some backstory. Right, so when I first started, I first started here in the in March time of last year, right? Permanently, obviously, we were working together before that. Yeah. But permanently, we went in the match. And on April the 1st... On April the 1st? On April the 1st, that Iceland... One, that one over there. Iceland announced they were making a hash... Crown, yeah. not a hash brown. So a crown a hash of crown. hash brown. So this is a crown made of hash browns. Six Icelands. No, I no, no, to. no, no, you're not. Six No, you Icelands. haven't told the story right. That one there, Chuck, Chuck Thomas. Chuck Thomas insisted, insisted it was that a we true were story. to find this hash crown. I don't think you even bothered. 
I took video footage. You went to one. I did not. I went to four minimum. And you made your kid do it. And I made my kid do one. And he said, I'm too embarrassed that I made him ask the shop lady. He said, he said, Mum, are you enough. sure this isn't and then, an April film? And they kept giving us these hash browns, which were very strangely packaged in exactly the same way that the crown was, because it didn't exist, did they, Chuck? It was in the news. No, well, on the 1st of April, Chuck. So we've since found out and we were told this morning, and both our reactions were exactly the same. Chuck said, come on if you get to an Iceland, because they're replacing the cross on hot cross buns And you said, I tick. can't, because I'm in Portugal again. And I said... <laughs> <laughs> That's, he's done you that. He's done you that. always in Portugal. Okay. Okay, so... Okay. So, so, so let's, let's just cut through the rubbish and say to the, the following thing... We've been asked on this show, and we're contractually obliged to do it because they pay the bills. That little, uh, he pays the bills, right? So, and I'm thinking, is it the first of April so yet? Mm. We're required to ask you to phone us if you found a hot cross bun that has been replaced with a tick in uh, order to stop offending. Funnily enough, Iceland do something like this at this kind of time every single year. You know, on April Fool's Day. It's in the Telegraph. OK, so... Well, I mean, we've looked into it, so we both did our own research, aside from the fact that neither... No, he lives I... in an area too posh to have an Iceland. Let me just point yeah, that out. Right. I mean, whereas she doesn't... He's only got a Sainsbury's. And Sainsbury's? You've got a Sainsbury's, haven't That's, you? With an Argos it. in it. Yeah, I didn't know what that was. You didn't even know. He didn't know. I went to stay at his house. He had nowhere for me to sleep. I had to buy a blow-up bed. Luckily, I said, oh, you've got that an Argos around bed. the corner. I had to buy myself a bed to sleep at his house. No, she didn't have to. She, I did. She didn't have to. She had to... Well, it's none of my business. I weren't sleeping in your bed. That was for sure. <laughs> no, she did. She did. <laughs> Fatty and Skinny went to bed. <laughs> Fatty, Fatty rolled, rolled over, over and Skinny was dead. <laughs> so, yeah, so we think we've done our own research, Andre and I, and found out. So we want to know, have any of you no, guys... don't want to know. ...seen no. a hot cross bun in Iceland that's got a tick where the cross would be. Because I don't think they exist. I think, that, I think it's nonsense. I think we'll waste our time. There are photos online. Well, if you Google it, it says some stores, in select stores in oh, certain Oh, that's what areas. they said about the bloody hash yes, crown thing. That's what they said about the as hash if, crown. As if you could have a hash crown. They said crown. select stores in certain areas. <laughs> in the size of the box. I know. Imagine, and you know, for two quid. You know where I realised that we were being tricked was not, unfortunately, after shop number six or whatever, was when I realised how much it was. Because I thought... No, that I'd have to be dearer to be that size made out of hash browns. Now, now, I just want to say to the public, I've always said that I have the greatest of respect for you. You're one of the finest broadcasters what? No, in this, this always starts before an insult. But how many shops did you go to and how many did I go to? You went to six and when you failed, you sent your son to two. And do you know what I did? Zero. Zero. Because I said from minute one, this is just utter... Gumption. No, no you that's because Daniel said, is a team player. Uh, yes, thank you, Chuck. I'm a team player. Oh, and he's a team player, is he? Yeah, well, Making you know what? You said I live in an area sometimes. too posh for an Iceland, so I can't go and get one. And you don't have a car. That's convenient, isn't it? Those, people, got... those people who don't have cars, so they can't do any nipping people around. Yeah, I don't so have I a car. Have to drive I don't to have all a car. I've got, a, I've got a driver, and it costs a fortune for my driver to go anyway, you know. And it's... then he makes you tea. He, he, he doesn't well, make my tea. His wife makes He makes my dinner. To make my tea. Well, we tea, say tea's, tea's what you do. We say tea. That's that's a tea. Hang on, are you a northerner who's ad adapted to the He's lunch his dinner roots. thing? I always called it dinner. No, you did not. Not from not from where you come from. It's no, do you know what? Do you know what I, and and tea do you know, and I, you know I actually it. used to call it? I used to call it breakfast, school dinner, and dinner. I actually did. I'm not. Well, joking. then you must be posher because than you make out. You must be... Sorry, sorry, am I posh than I made out? Yeah. I went to a private school and live in Ascot. Yes, I'm posh, cos I've done well. She's less so much. Well, uh, but OK. <laughs> I think that... I, I, think you, I think that things might have changed a little there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no husband's got a decent job now. She's got money now. She's got money now. <laughs> OK, look, it is his real name, Chomus, from, uh, from Devon. Chomus is in Devon. Chomus, you're on Talk TV. Yeah, OK. Um, it's, it's about a medication, disiopramide. Um, it's for heart patients. 
Okay. Um, you, you can't get it anywhere in the UK, but... Uh, before before we go any far, further, Thomas, just do us a favour. Clear, look, I, I don't have a problem with talking about any medical problem, but you, you do understand that we're regulated and we can't give medical advice to people. So, so okay. before you recommend anything, just bear that in mind. If you want to talk about yeah. anything you've done, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, I tried to get it from Southern Ireland through the cardiologist at Torbay Hospital, and then I found out that the cardiologist is not allowed to seek medication from a foreign country. Well, of course, that's right. Uh, Why is that wrong? So that, that, yeah, but I've had uh, information back from the hospital that if I pay a private cardiologist, uh, pay for everything, I can get it. So anybody in the NHS who can Oh, no, 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 no. Turn it, turn it off. No, I, I'm very sorry. There's something called the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, which approves treatments in the NHS. You can buy stuff privately. You can buy stuff on the NHS. But it's Saturday night, for God's sake, right? You know what? If you're a citizen of the Republic and you need medical treatment in the Republic, fly to Dublin, right? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go to a break and regroup. Worst call ever. Thomas, I'm very sorry. Back in a moment. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> it's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put the Statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, it put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. We're supposed to, her. We're supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Yes, this is Talk Radio and Talk TV, and I always think of this as the moment in the show. Do you know when pilots normally use autopilot? Yeah. But they have to prove every now and again they can present a little bit. This is the moment when I turn you off, do it myself. And you do it yourself. Yeah. And, and we think that what might have happened with Thomas 
how he rang up to ask us about his medication is that he was so sick of waiting on the line for the doctor to answer what? at the surgery that he thought, I'll give Andre and Danielle a go, see if they know what to do. Yeah, I love, I love that. <laughs> I'm, I'm very upset that I can't get this medication in Britain. Well, all right, just do, do whatever. <laughs> and, and, and people keep saying he wasn't Indian. Now, here's what I want to do right now. Right. So, Danielle, what? you're looking spangly today. I'm very shy. I've always today. said you've looked hot. We have got one of the most useless people I've ever met in my life called Finn in the, uh, in the gallery. Finn is very, very attracted to older women. Now, Finn, um, what you need to do is uh, just yeah, Finn duck is under. A good, Finn is a good looking guy. Oh, you Why me do in, you need. You, you don't put need. Me in when I'm so tired. Look oh, at me. My eyes are sunk. Look, you look, I've been working oh, for ages. Oh, just, You've got like a sexy, oh, like, oh, tired absolutely. thing going oh, really? on. Oh, really? Oh, so now I'm being flirted I think, I think, with. I think we might need to zoom in on him. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I look into the camera. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so, we want to ask you about this. What's what's this all about? Well, I mean, it's not just older women. I do like women my own age. Oh, okay. But it's just, what about very it's much just, younger women? No, I mean, I'm 22, like... so oh, okay. I, go, I go a little bit younger and it starts getting in ropey, doesn't it? Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. And, are, and are you into cricket? What with the jumper? I know, I know, the jumper. It's I, the other I, way round, though, I isn't thought, it? Yeah, I think it's quite nice. <laughs> Do you not? I think you, you just fan? like women. I think uh, yes, that's what we can that's, that's probably very true. surmise so, here. So, Finn, can I ask you about your career? Okay. Is it basically true that everybody who gets working in TV and radio is basically mm -hmm. just quite posh? Because you you look like basically like a manufactured private school thing. <laughs> yeah. right. That's what you look like. I, I I don't think I'm very posh. I come you from Abbey Wood. Well. Do you know Abbey Wood? I'm no. putting on I'm putting on. No, a I mean that out. is Abbey that Wood. is this is my like TV. Where's words. Abbey Wood then? It's South East London. Oh right, okay. Right. South East. See, it's it's not a posh area. It's not as posh I as you. I suppose not. No. Well, okay. it's not as posh as Lee and Lancashire. Right. Well, I'm, I'm afraid <laughs> Mogadishu is posher than Lee and Lancashire, son. Right. But what, I'll is tell you what, it, I, what is it about older women? What is it about it, older women that, that what is it about? not about just older pull women? Forward. <laughs> pull forward. Oh, oh. you want me well, to get closer? Me. Not to me. Oh, do you want me to not come round? Not to round? me, dickhead. I'm trying to, I'm trying to <laughs> improve myself. Don't swear at me. Why that's he love that's rude. I'm gonna, I can because get HR involved with that. Yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to improve the sound. No, 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 let's... No, I, could, I could swap by next week. I could be here no, with Danielle. No, 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 listen, oh. listen. No, listen, Late son. Night, oh. Listen, son. Listen, son. I don't whole... think we could be trusted. No. No, listen, listen. That whole, that whole sit forward and you go, why do you want that? It's for the sound. Let's nip that one in the bud. Oh, we're not. Yeah. We're not having that. Oh, oh, we're not having that. Oh. We're not having. We're gonna snip that one in the bud. I'm sorry. We're not having that room going. I, I apologise. Not having that room but, on a serious note, what, a serious is note. what is it? What is it that you like? Um, it's just something different, isn't it? Yeah. It's older. It's yeah. a little bit more intelligence, life experience, other experience. Okay. It's fun. But don't you want uh, not to be crude here, but the okay. firmness of. Of a, of a younger woman's I'm like not, younger not, women's bodies I'm not are searching, nice older women. I'm not searching for a relationship right now. Oh, okay. So oh, okay. are you are you a man right, slut? Well, then that makes sense. Am I a man slut? I yes. think that's very derogatory. I'd oh, say yeah. I'm a, I'd say mean, I'd, I'd refer to myself positive. as a, a bachelor. Sex positive. We could, oh, I thought that meant something else. We can't say else. that now. Should we say bachelor? A bachelor. A bachelor. Okay. So you, well, I well, thought, I thought that was something else. In fairness, it's meant shut up. No, You're going to get us in more something. trouble. You're going to get us in more trouble. <laughs> At 22, though, what yeah. you're saying is you're not ready to settle down, so you're going to try... Mm. Like, life is like a box of chocolates. Dating is yeah, fun. Like, try everything. Oh, I'm, I'm in, we're living in London. I'm in London. I, I get I, it. I can, I can well, date. she's living in Worsley. I never I'm living found... in Ascot. Uh, I, you're living in London. Probably a bit harder to date. In I never <laughs> found dating fun. I hated the really? whole... Yeah, hated everything about it. Why? Uh, everything about it. All the pretending, all of the... Like new, but is it pretending? Well, yeah, be because honest. you're trying to be the best you. Right, they're no, trying to be no, the best no, them. Yeah, you can't no, yeah, do a fart in front of them. Like, yeah, but nobody cares about farting. Okay, everybody, no. everybody if cares. You fart about, on the first date, no, you know no, it's everybody right. Everybody cares. <laughs> everybody cares about the following thing. Okay. Right. Oh, this is. You are, I got whoa, whoa. Dating advice yeah. from single Andre. Okay. Right, uh, okay. On, How on. many marriages? Come on, come no. on. Okay. Come not on. enough. Not <laughs> enough. Not enough. But not too many either. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? I'm going to go directly not to the second. No, I'm going to go directly to the second wife, which is a big advantage in TV because it avoids the first divorce. Don't have the trout. But anyway, okay. So I'm, I'm asking, the first wife. I'm asking. Wants I'm asking. To I'm me. asking you. I'm asking you a question. What? I look at you and I think you're all right. You're pretty hot. <laughs> 
And most of the boats... I was told that I looked like something out of a Bond film coming out of the sea in Portugal yeah, this week. that's right. I think you needed glasses. That's right, one of the urchins <laughs> as the gonna, model. One of the whales away. that needed okay. our But here's the question, here's the question, it's a serious question. You're a good-looking woman, and I know because I, the only thing when I go down to Weatherspoons, people say to me is they go, they go, bloody hell, you're that one with that. T oh, she's lovelier, <laughs> he's lovelier. Get okay. that microphone out of the way. Right? Do you find him attractive? Absolutely. Would you? He's if you were, no, he's twenty-two. If you were baby. not married, he's a baby. If you if you were scrolling through on a dating app and my face, I would think up, you was taking the mick out of me. What, why? Because I'll be like, he's 22 years old. You so okay, now I'm going to throw so out Andre. If fun. you were swiping for on a dating app and saw me, would you be like, yes? I, 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 would, I, would, I would literally say, any human that young that was willing to sleep with me, yes, <laughs> man, woman, beast, it wouldn't bother me. It wouldn't bother me. There we I go. In a nutshell, there we go. I will tell you, I will tell you, I will tell you, if, if your average llama was 22, I'd be willing oh. to. I don't, I don't think that's very legal. <laughs> no, it's not legal. Well, that, and, this, and, and, this by the way, and by the way, before we go any further, go on. for the purposes of the regulator, the comments we made were for comedy purposes comedy only. Comedy purposes. Uh, that's why I'm laughing. OK, OK, so mm -hmm. you want the cunding. <laughs> right, okay. You can't now, say now, it here like is, that. Here is some good news. Now I proposed they... the PR stunt for her earlier, and that was involving going on a date with me. Paps come along, you know, oh. all of a sudden, Lizzie Cundy Lizzie, is a new... Lizzie is single, isn't she? She's single, and I wonder. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to ask her. I, I never yeah. feel like I can get personal enough, but I'm going to have to ask her why, because she's No, hot. she's not a slapper. No, I'm not I know, joking, I know. she's not. I know, she's but not. why she choose to be single, then? Because she's Because it's an active she's, she's choice. She's waiting for me. It's a choice. Because her favourite thing to do is not date anyone, is to go... On camera, <laughs> you know that, that image, Lizzie Cundy. What I'm doing for the purposes of radio right. is putting my hands so, on my hips, pushing my elbows forward, and, and, and sucking my hand in. Pouncing. Going, prune, it's a good look. Prune, prune. Do you know what? If she's watching this, you'd be in trouble next time does. you see her. She's going to shout at no, you. No, can I tell you my Lizzie Cundy story? Can I tell you my Lizzie Cundy Lizzie's story? Lizzie's gorgeous. And she is gorgeous. I, I got my very, very first, poses, my very okay. first regular first, show what, right. on talk radio. And, um, and they said, get Lizzie Cundy in to come and talk about celebrities. And I'm sorry, I've got to tell you this story. And I know people are going to be angry. But anyway, she, she arrived. She, she landed from... She came directly from the airport. She knew nothing about the week's news. She got the Sun Entertainment section and just read out what was in it, right, threw that in the bin. And then the following day in the newspapers, it went, Lizzie Cundy turns up at News UK for her new show, <laughs> you know, and, and all she's she, doing the pouting face again done, for anybody listening on done, the radio. All she Please done, don't do it because that's going to haunt me and stuff all she'd nightmares done, that. She'd come straight back from Saint Tropez or wherever she was. She'd she'd literally she went. Now she isn't a joke. She's a good person. She went, oh darling, I don't know what's going on. Give me the sun, darling. She's you're, not. It's not like you're cotton. trying to ruin the credibility of your own show here. <laughs> what is he doing? You just set, you wind him up and you just set him off. Him, so go, so yeah. we're gonna get so so here's okay. one thing that we're gonna do. I mm -hmm. think right. Oh, and, wow. I, and I can't promise is this. Have you just made this but up? Next on week, spot? next week, Danielle mm -hmm. is off. We're gonna oh. try and get the Kundi. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try and get the Kundi. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna try and get you mm -hmm. and the Kundi mm -hmm. set up. Cool. Let's do it. What well, was okay? And we'll just can we say, and if there are any viewers watching who would go on a date with Finn... No, no, if there are any viewers watching... Please call sorry, in. Sorry, sorry, if there are 0344 499 if, if that any viewers watching... I used to do a show like that. that I used to do, do a show called Text to Date, and you had to text in your details, and we set people up on if dates. If there are any viewers Late watching... Late night telling me a new chuck. If, <laughs> if there are any viewers watching who have grandchildren who fancy... <laughs> look, we know the demographic. I would think <laughs> you were making fun. I would think you were taking the mick. I'd be like, he's, he's not serious. He's 22 years old. He's not serious. No, no I would. But, no. but that one's awful as well, the woke rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's dreadful. Yeah, but <laughs> see, no, he's Matt, me, and the, me and the woke rabbit have fun. about Matt that's like cheeky, though, because he said, he's cheeky no, no, with he it. No, he, he said he was up for the felt. 
you're, 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 no, you're That's like sexy. He's cheating. <laughs> Thanks, <You're> like, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> you got to be careful here. <laughs> I have to. Get married woman. OK, moving on. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what's just happened in the gallery? I know. They heard, they heard that. They heard that. What that did heard you his say? Name being mentioned. Up to the felt. Oh. Uh, OK, so... <laughs> He's a young man, right? I mean, you know, he, she's looking for some virile... Well, zip a dress up. Yeah. OK, Finn, I'll yes. tell you what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to say that... Do you have social media? I do. Right, why don't, don't you announce... No, don't us? put his... You don't want to put him on... No, he might not want to have his socials all over Talk TV. Twitter? No, your phone... No. Phone in and chat. No, it's phone we'll number. Be, we'll right, be, we'll phone be, number. We'll be, number we'll be Silla Black here. You won't know who that is because you're too young. No we'll be Silla, we'll Finn, be Silla Black. Finn, I'm going to give you some very good news. Mm -hmm. I don't actually have your mobile number. Oh, thank uh, Therefore, I'm I not going to give you... I don't have yours either. Right, well, that's... Well, yeah, I see, I see the point you're making. Oh, you know, oh. This, oh, right. this looks right. like... This is getting a little right, bit... Right. Are you that's just... Like are you a bit jealous? I'm jealous. Like old person's phone. This I'm is. jealous. It is, isn't it? It is. I'm it's like abused. a Nokia brick I'm that being, almost I'm shattered being my abused base. Here. Just turn them off. Just turn them off. <laughs> Just turn them off. Okay. If you've got any views on Finn's day, why am I reading this? It's not even actually something to be read. If you have any views on <laughs> Finn's dating, if you want to Finn, phone in and chat up Finn, Finn, basically. Call us on 344 499 We would love you to ring in, especially if you're an attractive an older thing. woman. What's your type? I don't have a type. That's the best oh, thing. No. That's the good thing about it, though. That's a good no. thing about it. Open to all. Well, do you know what? I, I can kind of agree, because mm -hmm. I think, you know what my type is? Personality Just a se matters. A sexy person. Well, that's why she People can be super sexy and mm -hmm. not necessarily, like, picture perfect. That's right. That's absolutely right. You're, that's not, absolutely right. you're not super sexy. No, I am. I am. That's, that's, no, not, that's really not a third not. leg. You re it really oh, isn't. Oh, it's disgusting. I know. Everything's wrong about it, isn't it? I've heard it's tiny. OK, Stan is in Burnley. Stan, you're on Talk TV. Why is he talking? I mean, why, where, 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 where? He boasts about it too often. Although oh, oh. that could be why. Hi, Stan. Yeah. Hello, um, how I'm are you? I'm really good. I've got to be honest, the last, like, ten minutes, I've, I've absolute garbage. Was it? I completely... You not enjoy you. that, Stan? Do you, so you don't fancy Finn, then? I just think that's... Probably the worst bit of broadcasting I've ever listened to. Oh, but well, you stayed. Absolute garbage. Completely agree. Um, Completely agree. Yeah, what did I, you actually want to I, talk about? I wanted to talk about something quite serious. I don't really give a shit about Finn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Saturday um, nights are serious. Go on. Go for it. I agree with him. Well, Saturday night might not, might not be serious in your house, but yeah. Don't let me be um, the ju I'm Ask me first, and then I can give my opinion, if that's all right, Stan. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I honestly believe that was a lot, that was the worst bit of broadcast. We know that. Ever. OK, what do you want to talk about, Stan? Yeah, so I, I, I think it's I'm, I'm looking at the election, yeah? Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, voting somebody in. Yeah, that's I, definitely I something, that, a conversation I, that I have yeah. in my house. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can be serious so you can talk about nonsense like you did for the last time. But yeah, go all on. right, all right, let's yeah, let's Stan. get on with it now, Stan. Come on. Yeah. So my problem is, or my, my issue is, um, I want to talk about during the COVID era, yeah. our government spent thirty six billion yeah. thirty six billion pounds on an application. Yep. Track and trace. Absolute waste of time. The biggest waste of time I've ever known in my life. Yes, Dan? Apart from the last 10 minutes. But well, 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 I think, just I think 36 just... billion is oh, more of a no. waste of time than 10 minutes. No, I've, had, I've, 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 no I've had enough of him. I've had enough of him. He's boring me to pieces <laughs> He is. Now. He's boring for a Saturday look, night. Look, at the, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, right... <laughs> I don't pick every single segment that comes on this show. We're having a bit of a laugh for 10 minutes. Vicky is in Kent. Do you know what? Don't, you know, oh, don't like what you're talking about. Talk, you're boring me to I people. want to talk about bloody, politics Bloody all dreadful, time. bloody dreadful, bloody dreadful. Oh, go on, I'm sick of it. <laughs> Hi. 36 billion on this. I think it's dreadful as well. Not as dreadful as you. Uh, yeah. Oh, get out of it, you boring git. Vicky will cheer us up. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Let's speak some more garbage, shall yeah, we? Yeah, should we talk about David? 
Is that what we're talking yes. about? Yes, definitely. I knew Absolutely. it. <laughs> Did you like him? Did you want him to win? In the beginning, I wasn't sure of him because of what I'd seen him on, I just thought he was a lollop, but he really, really grew on me. He grew on me. So we're talking win. about Big Brother. We're talking about the yeah, winner of absolutely. Celebrity Big Brother, David Potts. And the same thing happened to me, Vicky. Weren't sure at first, but he grew who on me. Who is David Potts? He won. No, he's who the is winner. He? Oh, he's like a reality TV star, isn't he? Is I... He is a reality star. He is. He is. Yeah. Right. Ricky, I think we're going to keep you on because I think we have to go to the news. So we do, we do. And we'll, I have we'll to say, as I always said about reality TV, what was it? Britain's Got Talent, the first winner was Paul Potts. And I always said I could never forgive him for what he did to Cambodia. And people have often said to me, what did Paul Potts did to do to Cambodia? It's a political joke. OK. I'll be willing hey, to I explain. tell you what, though, I bet Stan... Might like that. If Stan it's a would like the joke, joke about Pol Pot. Yeah, he'd, he might anyway, decide that's serious enough. We're for him. back in a moment. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. We're going to be back straight after this. This is Talk TV. For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter. For the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Feltz, every weekday at 4pm, only on Talk, on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online and you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put the statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. for... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, it put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. And of course, the World War Bear! And that was a quick <laughs> toilet break. That was super fast. You did well there. 
It was uh, water, not bread. <laughs> That's all right, then. Well, we still got Vicky on the line. Vicky in Kent. Yes. yes. Hello, Vicky. Oh, well Hello. done, Vicky. Hello. <laughs> You're through to Danielle and Andre on the late night phone in on Talk TV, Talk Radio. And I know we are talking about Big Brother, and my mum's just gone mad at me because she said, You've spoiled it now. I was saving it. I mean, she's been back from Portugal for like eight hours now. I don't know why. Oh, dear. oh sh Oh, sorry. Sorry for spoiling it for everybody. It. Oh, but she did make the it. comment, yeah. my mum, that Thanks, was quite Daniel. funny. Shut up, Chuck. She said, <laughs> she might as well say that to my producer, my boss. Um, she did make the, the comment that was quite funny. She said, maybe now David can buy himself some pants. Now he's won. <laughs> <laughs> Stan's we're back. just going to put you on Come hold. On. We're, Happy we're, we're, Stan's no, back. we're concerned that Stan's the biggest fan we'll ever lose. Yeah. Stan, come on. Right, listen, I'm sorry about all that. I didn't mean to upset you guys. <laughs> it's okay, Stan. Don't worry about it. We're, we're, we're made of big stuff. We've got our big girl pants on. We're all right. No, we've not got big girl pants <laughs> on. Let's just be clear we haven't. <laughs> Do you not like it when we mess about? Do you only like it when we talk about serious stuff, Stan? Um, I'm a quite a serious guy, to I be am. fair. Well, but that's listen, OK. Listen, I've just went upstairs, i put my big girl pants on, so we're all on the same page. Yeah? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, listen, I'm sorry if I offend anyone. I didn't mean that. Stan, Stan, Stan don't I be don't want to lose you as a fan. You have to understand <laughs> that we can't respond to absolutely everything you ever say. But, but, you know, I don't want to lose you as a fan. Why are you playing Stan by Eminem now not, on I'm your phone? Oh, my word. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. It sounds rubbish. Sorry, Stan. I was, Stan. I was trying to make a joke about you being a fan we lost, given the... Yeah, we get it. It was very laboured. Even Stan will agree that that was very laboured. Stan, yeah. do you know what mm. I want to do? Because I agree with you. You have to understand I agree with you. <laughs> what did you actually want to talk about, Stan? Come on, let's let's get rid of Vicky. Nobody cares about her. Come on, Stan. Yeah, so just let me turn it down. Hang on. Oh, here we go. It's all kicking off in Stan's place. No, it's all on the yeah. telly. Go on. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, we just turn the telly down. So, I, I, I'm just sat here now, right? And I'm thinking all the, all the talk about all the finances and the, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then... During the COVID lockdown thing, we spent £36 oh, billion. I don't know how the... I still now... I think because they left it a period of time before they kind of... You know, we were... We, basically, we're the country that has took the longest to investigate it, haven't we? Everybody else, it's done, yeah. signed, sealed, delivered, all sorted. I think they do that on purpose so that we forget what an absolute mess they made of it. Yeah, but if you... But that if, track and trace was... Was, I, I think... Let, put it this way. Let me just tell you this, and this is true. Right. Well, this is from my opinion. Sorry, I will say this. So, it's your truth. Okay, it's my it's no, no. It's like in it's the like NHS, Megan. It's in like the Megan. NHS. Let me tell you. It's in the NHS, truth. they use a system, right? That my brother, who works in tech, said is absolutely useless, right? But they insist on having this particular kind of system, whereas there's loads of other systems out there that they could use that would work much more efficiently, be much easier, easier to use, easier for the staff within the NHS. I think a lot of people in the NHS would agree with me there. Um, again, still yeah. my opinion, but that... And, and this is another example of that. That NHS track trace was done so badly because it was all in-house. Yeah, correct. So the tech was absolutely... And I'm, I'm a bit of a tech... But like my my brother's in no no actually actually can I, can I can I explain he said, this? He said this is the biggest useless app I have ever seen. Can I explain ever? this much more easily? Because I had a mate yeah. who explained it to me much better. Yeah. Do you know what he said? He said, look, if you actually want to do something like have a spreadsheet or do some word processing, as we used to call yeah. it. What you normally do is download something from Microsoft, download yeah. something from Google. Because they've got the some, best equipment. They've, they've, got the they've best done stuff. it the best. What the yeah. NHS do is go, let's build our own. I know. And, and, and you yeah. look at Microsoft, Microsoft spend billions, Apple spend billions, Google spend yeah. billions, and then the NHS spend 300 million. That's what happened Which is a chunk of change. Yeah. But it's just dreadful. It's just dreadful. And it, go on, sorry, Stan. Yeah, so, so from my point of view, I mean, 36 billion. Thirty-six billion pounds is like 
it's probably all we spend on um, our defence. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. Probably, it's probably not quite right, but it's virtually right. Do you know what my my theory yeah, behind what, that was? Yeah, I think that that was brilliant. the government's way because at the time, obviously, there was all the social media that's around. I'm not going to say, but there was all different social media around, and it was all about collecting data, collecting data. And I think it was the government's attempt, <laughs> terrible attempt, at collecting no, data no, in no, some the, form. The, rea the reality but, but, is, I had friends of mine, Stan, who were members of Parliament, loads of them who were members of Parliament, and what they said was, they said, look, the reality is the second lockdown, the track and trace, all of this stuff, the purpose of it is to stop media criticism. Uh, Nobody believes it it's a good actually, idea. Yeah. Now, remember, Witty and Valance, right, and, and I believe Witty was one of the most dangerous uh, extremist leaders of the Western world, but not deliberately. When Sir Chris Whitty was doing all this, nobody balanced it. He sat there going, we need to lock down everything because I'm very afraid. He, three blokes walked up to him to have a selfie with him and he demanded special brand protection. The guy has no personality. But yeah. here's the point. The reality of it is very simply this. The second that you only listen to medics and don't listen to educationalists, don't listen to psychologists, don't listen to economists, then you end up with what we got in the end, well, this which is was the thing. lockdown. It's, it's balance, it's isn't it? It's about balancing yeah. out the negative uh, against... There was no, neg there there was was no, no balance. balance. And, and do you Mental know the, health issues just went out the window. Stan, there was Stan no thank you so balance. much. And do you know, the, do you know the, th the reason why you and I agree on this? It's because I had an elderly parent and you had young children. Yes. And you know full well that for elderly people, yes, there was a need to lock down. Uh, but we did it ourselves. Yeah. But for those little children, that was child abuse. It, it, that was state-sanctioned child abuse. I've seen... I, I call my youngest a COVID kid because he is he is different from the other kids. And things. is he backward as a result compared to where he would have been? Definitely. I mean, he's not stupid. No, I'm not obviously saying. not. But he's but the, the, the children in his class, particularly children who are now around the five, six-year-old age mark, if anyone's watching, I'm sure they will agree with me here, that those children in that class, and I've heard this from teachers as well, like they they are not um, they've they've found it a lot harder to settle into the school they're day. Not socially they're developed. Not, yeah, it, it's it's had a massive impact. I think it will eventually balance itself out and everything will be fine. I do think that because I think children are resilient. But there was I tell you what upset me about COVID more than anything else. There was the have and the have not. Look, the reality is. Danielle and I are not normal people, but we're the haves, right? You know, we've got good jobs and, and we live well, in nice areas. Well, not in COVID areas. times, but, because but, we, but, we, I didn't have a job where I could get my kids into school. So all right, at fair, that point, it was people who could get the kids into fair, school. That fair were enough, but when, but when I went down to my local um, computer shop, because I wanted some old laptop repaired, um, because I wanted to work from home, you know, there was somebody who walked in with five laptops... And admittedly, all right, so yeah. one of them was six years old or whatever, going, can you repair those? I've got three kids. And, and, that's, was, what, it, we and would, that's what happened yeah. in the rich areas. But what happened in the poorer areas, remember, was couldn't, mum couldn't afford yeah. internet and, and dad would come home with a smartphone and everyone had to do the homework on one smartphone. The schools did try and provide. They did there try. There was an element of trying to provide so, um, uh, uh, internet to kids, and not internet, but computers, and they, were, they had these laptops that they could... Like higher out. And what annoys me is these po-faced old bags going, Oh, I don't mind spending my life baking banana bread if it makes oh. do you know do you know what I'd have done? I'd have taken public sector pensions and cut them commensurate with GDP. In fact, I'd have taken all public sector salaries. So every single person in the public sector had to take a 30% pay cut. Someone once said to me, what's wrong with you? You only have to stay inside. And I what was home rubbish. I was homeschooling four children and my husband was stuck in Bristol. I was like, what's wrong with me? Anyway, there is a reason that anyway, they go any, to school. Anyway, darling, now we've done Kent. Uh, yeah. Now we've done so. Now we've done Stan. You can do Vicky and Kent. Oh yay! Right, you can talk about me. <laughs> Back to Celeb Big Brother, Vicky. Thank you for holding on the line. So yeah, have you Hello. enjoyed Stan, it? Stan, thank you. I enjoyed your thank bit. Thank you, Stan. I he liked, liked your, your bit. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like his bit. <laughs> yeah, go on, Vicky. So, what did you think? I thought it was really, really good. Actually, it was a good Big Brother. Yeah. I think I should bring it back permanently. It would have been better with you in it, though. It, do you know what, Vicky? I completely agree. I, try, I tried my best, oh, Vicky. How much I did I hear best. about that? Oh, you by the way, by the way, because of media monitoring, 
Big brother, big brother, big brother. Danielle Nichols, Danielle Nichols, Danielle oh, yeah. Nichols. That little, that yeah. little flag. Hey, you that never know. Flag. Maybe next time I'll do the a more, bit better. The more times, by the way, yes. that you tweet a pu public Facebook and whatever, Instagrams at public, saying Danielle Nichols and big brother, the more it'll flag at ITV. Really? Oh, really That's what we need to big do. brother Danielle Nichols. Big brother Danielle Nichols. I'm a celebrity. Get That's me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, so let me. So, Vicky, let's stop. Um, Danielle Nichols, do you believe that you're a celebrity? Y yes. Yeah. Would you like to get out of here? I'd love to be a celebrity. <laughs> get me out of here. Amazing, Danielle. Yeah. So you're one of those celebrities who would like to get out of here. I right? am, yes, that's for oh, sure. Oh, Danielle, that's oh, not yeah. obvious for the algorithm, is it? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep pushing Vicky until they're sick of me. I'm just going to keep turning up. Oh, let's do oh, it. Oh, thank you very much, Vicky. Thanks for staying what, on the line. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We've been deluged with calls as usual, and thank you so much. We're going to do the one-minute call thing now. So, Kevin, you don't even have to say hello. You just have to tell us your piece, and we're going to give you a minute. Kevin's in Basingstoke. You're on Talk TV. i got a question for you. We borrowed £1.7 trillion in the last 14 years. It hasn't disappeared. Who's, who's got it all? Uh, it's sold on the international bond market, and originally the uh, interest rate was considered to be virtually zero or potentially negative. But now... It's a positive. That's going to add a huge amount to your tax bill. But this is not an economic show. So, Kevin, we're going to cut you off. Uh, Georgetta, Georgetta is in County Durham. Georgetta, you got a minute? You're on talk TV. Georgette. I didn't cut him off. You know, I, I was happy to talk about economics. I bet you were. I've got half an A level in it. That's right. Which is better than the government. Sorry, are we Britain. saying your name right? Is it Georgette? Whoever you are, Hello. talk, talk. Are you there? Georgette? Now you've been biffed. He's okay, scared. Arthur is in Leeds. Arthur, you're on Talk TV. Right. There's a system to save billions of pounds and it would save the health service. Uh, and it's, it wouldn't need to put the immigrants in the hotels anymore. We'd put them in caravans instead. Leave them a caravan. And gypsies have been in caravans for hundreds of years, so it's safe. The only people against it will be those who are getting backhanders from the hotel owners. So you believe in caravan sites for whom? Well, give them a caravan to live in. Why should, why should, hotels uh, is costing twice as much as an average family lives. Yeah, but I think the caravans would be expensive too, Arthur, wouldn't they? I think that's quite... No, I think no, that's quite... Um, I'd no, like a caravan. £5,000. £5, and they last years and years and years. Well, yeah, but that's assuming... Arthur, but that's assuming that they look after them and that they pay bills and stuff. They look after themselves. I mean, we look after ourselves, don't we? Well, yeah, we well we're supposed to, unless you uh, expect the state Arthur, to look after Arthur, you. Arthur, 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 what what is your interest in caravans? Well, do you have a caravan park, Arthur? I, I don't believe in wasting money. I've been a saver all my life. How many migrants would you put in each caravan, Arthur? Mm, one, three. Two, three. One, so, two, three. are we talking a two bed with a bed in the living room? Yeah? What do you, what do you make? What do you put in? Two yeah, because you've got, you got the one in the living room that you can turn into a bed, haven't you? Oh. Well, have a bed in Do you beds. want my story? No, also, also, you can install a bib. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Arthur, 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 I don't mean to be disrespectful, but the big advantage... I think that's, Arthur, I think that's no, no, too nice. On, I think it'd be nice Arthur, to have a caravan. The, 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 other, the other advantage of a caravan... I don't think we should be keep the other giving them anything. Sorry, the, the other advantage of a caravan is you can install a bibberwack as well, which is a uh, a small tent. What about Arthur, processing them and letting them go no, to work and no, then they can no, pay for their no, own caravan? No, I want, no what hang, about on, that? hang on a second. I want to ask Arthur, do you think a caravan plus bibberwack would be the way forward? Illegal, illegal immigrants shouldn't be in this country in the first place. I know, so I mean, why are you giving him a caravan? No, he's giving them a bibberwack. 
I want a bibberwhack. Don't give him a caravan. Give him a bibberwhack. It's fifty thousand pound each person a year in the whole town. It's bibberwhack. There's people going in hospital. Do we? Do you know what? There's a re- there's a pontins near where I live that's a bit. There's a, a bit... pontins in Worsley. <laughs> I no, swear. Stop, uh, Southport. I swear, if there is a pontins, if there's a pontins in South in Salford, then honestly, you'd be better going back to Albania. <laughs> trust me. Trust yeah. me. You don't want to be on. I, you don't no, want to be on a Salford no, no, pontins. No, no, no. I swear to you, nah. I have the very greatest of respect <laughs> for the people for Salford, but I swear to you, <laughs> he's still going. He's still going. He's still going. Arthur, Arthur, do you believe that the ultimate deterrent <laughs> to coming from Albania would be a Pontins with a bibberwhack in uh, in what? Salford? Why do you keep saying bibberwhack? Because it's a small... It increases the size of the... It won't cost millions of pounds. Yeah, it wouldn't cost millions of pounds, you're right. Well, what about in the Salf- In Salford. It, no, it's all contaminated in Salford. They'll give you it for free. Because the thing is... No, in- no. no. You're, you're taking the piss out of me, aren't you? He is. He's being an idiot in here, Arthur. Yeah. Well, He's being an idiot well. about it. No, it, I do it, think, but I do think, Arthur, I'm not being funny, but that if you had a caravan in the outdoor space, it's quite a luxury. Like, it... it you're saying give them a caravan. I don't think they should. I don't think they should have anything, really. Only something temporary. Very quick. That's a luxury. A what? £150 a night in a hotel. Oh, I know. No, I'm, I completely agree, Arthur, but I, I don't think... What I'm Greenback. trying to say to you is I don't think that the caravan... I don't think that the... the say, either way, you're paying for housing for people when other people can't... It, bloody pay the bills. Do you know what I mean? There's no council houses for us to live. These people are coming over illegal immigrants. We shouldn't let them leave France. We're paying France and millions of pounds a year and the France are not doing that about it. I agree. There's definitely... It's, money is definitely being wasted. That's for sure. And this Good. bloody bolt thing, that was a great idea, weren't it? <laughs> As well. And Rwanda... Oh, no, but, but <laughs> Arthur, <laughs> Arthur, 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 what? Arthur, Arthur, I'm so sorry. I've got something in my throat. Arthur, what about a caravan in Rwanda? Could we do that? Because my view is, if you were to get all the used caravans in Britain and fly them to Kigali, then you could have the caravans in Rwanda. We be up on TV so he gets around. Oh, by the way, ask your mobile what we're asking is, and it says, no one is black or white, and I had an image in the newspaper 70 years ago, and then a few weeks ago, a young Nazi lady on TV said, no one is white. And that's the only time in 18 years that I'd have heard a reference. No one is black or white. You ask your mobile, I'll tell you. Yes, that's quite that's quite right. So, so Kigali caravans are. <laughs> that one. Okay. As long as we say black or oh, black and white, yes, we, we are belittling the dark-skinned people. We shouldn't. We look. We 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 have to prioritise our own people. We have to ensure that caravans of quality. Caravans of quality go to British I people. Think, the, I think that... The, no, the caravan, caravans no, we've all been as, to Patheli. As we've council all been to accommodation Patheli. is a good idea. That, is it um, our friends doing that at the moment? Putting that no, let's not idea. talk... Let's Sorry, not, OK. Let's not, so so okay. my view, Arthur, and I'm going to put this to you formally, and watch this. OK, Arthur, one of the things that we now need to do is we need to talk about caravan parks in Rwanda. If we were able to build major caravan parks in Rwanda, then we could immediately take from the Royal Navy to uh, the ports and immediately deport people to Rwanda, get them processed in uh, in Kigali, but in caravan parks, and we could use second-hand caravans from the United Kingdom to do it. Arthur, that's the solution, right? <laughs> Aren't you against illegal immigrants coming over there? I'm against can't illegal cope. immigrants. Oh, it's supposed to have cope off, it is now. <laughs> I've... I've railed against illegal migration.
Anyway, um, Danielle, I think you need to deal with the rest of this call. Arthur, our, our, our producers just asked um, me to ask you, would they be allowed to have, like, a clubhouse with entertainers and stuff at the holiday yeah, park? Yeah, be you and Stephen Mulhern. To, like, keep them calm and Yeah, happy. so it'd be you and Mulhern in your red coats again. Hey. He's making a lot of money out of that. What, what but entertaining when... illegal migrants in Kigali? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he is. <laughs> I think I think. Arthur, fa- what do you think? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a bit tired now. He's had enough now. He's had enough. Go and have a lie down, Arthur. Oh, Thank oh. you very much for ringing in. That was Arthur in Leeds. Arthur, that was um, a, a an inspirational thought about immigration policy. So, Martin in Derby, look, I, I want to extend this now, Martin. Do you think that the solution now is to move all of the Patheli campsites to Kigali in order to Have house... Have you said Mar- Is it Marilyn? Marilyn. Yes. Marilyn. Hi, Mar- Marilyn. Marilyn. Should, should we move illegal migrants, f- move all of the old... Um, all of the old caravans from places like Patheli, from places like Khandidno, pronounce that right, uh, to Kigali in Rwanda, was is that the solution? When you think now in this day and age on these caravan parks, yeah. caravans are only allowed to be on the park for a minimum of about 12 or 13 years. Yeah. Mm. Some of them are absolutely immaculate. So, yeah. and, and some are dreadful. Some are dreadful. No, some of them are gorgeous. No, some are dreadful, though. Some there are. Them are no, there is. Yeah, no, Marilyn. No, she's right. They're not because they're not allowed. When the caravan gets too old, this is right, isn't it, Marilyn? When it gets too old, you've got to have a new caravan haven't you yeah my yeah. sister's got a lovely one and it, yeah. she's had it quite a few years but it's still yeah. modern but as i say it's a shame when you see them all stacked up and they won't have any old ones on the caravan so are you supportive but, of oh, yes, my so idea Marilyn of, sending right of sending second hand the... second hand caravans to kigali well, wherever that is, I want yeah. to know. Do you know, I was re- I'm was i lying in bed, very uncomfortable, because I've had a new hip the other week and I can't oh. sleep good. But, um... Well, we that, hope you get that, better soon, Marilyn. Oh, God, I do, because I'm screaming in. Is it, it's not it's nice, is made it? made me mad. When, was, so you're screaming in the night because of your hips? Yeah, Pardon? she's not sleeping very well. Yeah, I can't, I can't sleep. sleep. I only sleep on my left-hand side. And me because too. I've had it done that side, they said I can't sleep yes, on it yet. Right. So okay. Yeah, but I've enjoyed the show till Stan come on. You know, uh, my oh, dad's yeah. down the mind type attack. But he yeah. went on and on and on. And I see him saying, what did he call us a haggle? Bags, because we bait joy in COVID. I thought that was bloody cheeky of Yeah, it. disgusting. People, he's he's a real... I'll tell you what you need to do, Marilyn. I Let want, her speak. I Come want on. you to send a personal message to him, a personal rebuke. Just just explain <laughs> well, to him your people. hatred, your anger and your disgust bait. with him. A lot of people bait and did a lot of things that yeah. they don't normally do because they couldn't work. So I dare he say that. And yeah. then you got... Oh, he was that terrible. Was, no, oh, Marilyn... Sh- sh- he said that. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, you had the last gentleman on. As yeah. I say, I've been lying here, I'm in the laugh. Yeah. And then you had the last gentleman on. And I'm mm. thinking, oh, here we go again, doom and gloom. I I'm, know. I'm, I've had a, I, I have to say one thing, though, before you cut me off. This is what I want to say. You're not going to cut was, you off. and might keep you all night, actually. We like you. Good, 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 good. <laughs> last night, I was awake till ten past four. If it's not... Well, oh. it's just gone as well. No, I can't sleep. But what I was going to say was, I, I have to praise the NHS because I was sent to a private hospital. And when they told me the price, £15,000, I goes, oh, no, no, no. For your hip? Yeah, for a private hospital. But then he said, because I come under this criteria that I don't smoke, my... my uh, Blood pressures, uh, but I've not got diabetes and I don't drink. I thought, oh, well, she can get on the food. Drink, but, uh, if, Good. <laughs> I to order done. but I was sent to this hospital, I didn't have to pay. So, the best I, thing about the NHS no, is it gave you free private treatments. And no, yeah. she's paid all her life into the NHS. Yeah. Have you gone mad? No, you Have support, you gone mad? No, you support, We're all paying for it. You yeah, support I'm an eradication of the private Oh, sector. no, shut up. No, yeah. I'm, I'm I now, just agree with the NHS and you just mm. don't because you're an idiot. Can't Go on, Marilyn. Well it was my it was the, the consultant in the first place from the Derby Hospital that rung me and said uh, you know, I've got several years' wait, but then I had to go and have another X-ray and saw something a bit, you know, dodgy. That so he said, "Would you like 
to go to this other hospital. So when he was on about it's private, yeah. I thought, no, because I paid £2,000 just to have my finger done. And then he said, uh, what I've just said, I wouldn't have to pay. Right. So I thought, well, I can't stand the pain, I'll go. So mm. I had to go for a check-up a couple of weeks ago. Mm. And we're talking of four or five months, that was a Friday. Mm. And then I got a phone call on the Tuesday. Yep. To say I was going, you know, I could go in, and, and, well, I went March the 9th. Brilliant. So Although I was frightened, and I've got to say to anybody, um, I've probably been a bit of a, but, you know, since I lost my husband, you know, I get a bit upset a lot. But, okay, we'll take your time, Marilyn. Yeah, I, um, the couldn't get, it was a, a nightmare to start off with, because my friend who took me, come from me, half past five in the morning, had to be there for six o'clock. Yeah. Got lost, I thought, oh, here we go. Yeah. So when we finally found this place, it was like on an industrial estate, that was number one. Then when they took me down, they couldn't find me blood, and I thought, oh, where oh, we go, no. plodding away. And then oh. when they took me in to put this thing in the back, I could feel him prodding me, and I could feel the needle and sticking what? in. The, um, it, well, when it came to Andre, he was trying to find, he was threading, what do you call it, can, you know... Um, Epidural. Oh, that's it, like that. Yeah, you were, yeah they numb you from the waist the down for that. Going. It's a better way yeah. of having the operation. Yeah, the problem, ma, ma, it's better for yeah, her because yeah, she's still awake yes, when she has yes, the arm. Yes, but yeah. Marilyn, no disrespect. I had miscarriages yeah. and I had to give no, but, birth but, to them but, and that's but, what they did no, but, for me. But, but, but no disrespect. Every yeah. time we talk about the NHS or any medical stuff, people talk in quite great detail about what happened to them. Marilyn, I'm going to have to ask you to give us the headline. Well, just to say that never be afraid because they found that afterwards my, my spine was crooked and then when they said I'm ready to go oh. through, I thought, this is it. Do you know, I never felt a thing, Andre. All I could do was knocking and banging it all, but no, so I'd advise anybody not Good. to be frightened. Don't okay. be frightened. Okay. Thank you. Marilyn in Derby just by, saying, by the way, if you need an operation, get your operation Marilyn, done. Marilyn don't be frightened. Marilyn in Derby is saying very clearly, don't be afraid of the NHS, even though the the hospitals yeah, are terrible. Uh, uh, Even though the hospitals are terrible, yeah, because the don't conservatives worry. broke it. If you, they if, broke it. If you are old enough, they made and, sure and you have, they broke it. Even if you're old enough and you've looked after yourself, they'll send you to a private hospital. You'll be completely fine. So that is the message from Marilyn. More next. <laughs> Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, oi, oi, treat go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. 
And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. We're yeah, supposed it was another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. and welcome back to Talk Radio Talk TV. I'm Danielle Nichols. Yes, the one you saw on GMB on Tuesday. I was on Good Morning Britain. And, and I'm Andre and, and, I'm Andre, and I'm Andre Walker who was voted <laughs> who did 5 hours straight on Kate yesterday. Who was voted British curry eater oh, of the you year. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's 18 true. months ago. So we're hoping to retain the title. Yeah. But British media's curry eater of the year. And I'm, I, I can that, see how you achieve major, that. That's a major achievement. And you're still going, aren't you? Because your driver keeps bringing you so biryani. No, no. And, so I mean, I, I think it's very rude. As I've oh. always said, there's no sexism in this show. My driver, who's a man, earns as much as Danielle, who's a woman. That is only fair. And he also makes me a biryani. Well, his wife does. Because he's a man, he does the driving, his wife does the cooking. All right, nice. We've got Roger in Tamworth, in Staffordshire, uh, on the line. Roger, can you hear us OK? Claire. Yes. Right. No. I just wonder if if it, nobody said. Well, actually, there's two questions. Okay. One I want to know. It's about Gaza. Yeah. Okay. I mean, is Netanyahu a relation of Himmler, Heydrich, or Hitler? Um, I well, I think I think we have to be slightly careful. So, Roger. To be fair, I understand that some people think that the behaviour of uh, the Israeli government is unacceptable. But I will say one thing, and Roger, I understand the point you're making. I do think it's important. Himmler, Heydrich and Hitler were, were Nazis responsible for the Holocaust and Israel is a Jewish state. And I, I understand you're trying to make a point in a fulsome way, but I, th I think it's probably a little bit unfair of a way to, to, to put that point forward. I don't think so, because... If I do. Cut him off. No, cut him off. Cut him off. Because the only problem is we're just going to have a big argument about comparing Jews to Nazis, and I'm not doing it. I've, I've got more problems in my life than doing that. I'm very sorry, Roger. I gave you the opportunity. And it is... You it, it is well, it's not, it's not Sunday morning, but, you know, it's still Saturday no, night not, vibes. Not, the, the, pro the problem is I'll have, I'll, I'll have my boss emailing me, phone up, Hitler's a Nazi, and all this stuff. I'm not doing it. Um... I'm very sorry, pal, but we're not doing it. We've Jane? got Jerry in Stoke-on-Trent. Oh, I was going for Jane. Oh, no, oh, we you could go for Jerry. We'll go, go for Jerry in Stoke-on-Trent. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Hello, I'm doing fine. Please speak to you. Sorry, you're parking soon. Okay. It's a safe box. I think she's a bit crap. No, it's OK. He's got Parkinson's, so he's, he's saying he's, if he's fine, he's shaking. Yeah, go on, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Take your time. Who's care? Who in care room? Drink. Covered. It's awful. Can we almost have got a lot of chance for locking the door and it's an awful thing. Wings. 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 Your friends just dying next day after day. It's awful. It's awful thing. Friends dying next day after day. Young ones too. Young just old ones. Once it's different care rooms for old people. And young people as well. SSS. SAS. Army, uh, real big people, and she's like Jerry, 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 Jerry. Can I can I stop you and just say the following thing? The slight problem we've got is because of partly because of the illness and partly because of the quality of the line, uh, we're struggling to understand what you say. Now we don't want to be disrespectful to you, so what we're going to do is return you to a producer. A producer is going to make a note of what you've said, and we're going to respond to that properly. What we don't want to do is end up in a situation well, where, where people don't understand what yeah. people are saying. So, so Jerry, a producer is going to deal with you properly now. Jane is in Cumbria. Jane, you're on Talk TV. Evening. Morning, you two. Good morning, like... Jane. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Just getting over a bit of a bad patch at the minute. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, just a just a bit of a one. Okay. Just just fun enough to just to say 
that I think you two are brilliant on this show. Oh, thank you, Jane. Did we cheer you oh, up? Yeah. Have we cheered you up? Because that's yeah. honestly my yeah. mission. It's Saturday nights. So obviously, this is a predominantly a news channel but it's entertainment on a saturday night and if we've if we've made you smile then that's jane can i can i can i tell you jane can i tell you something honestly one of the things that i'm really proud of and i'm genuinely proud of is when people walk up and think that we're married because of our relationship being so good on her actually do you know when somebody walked up to me and went, Andre, we're going to give you this Saturday night show and, and we've got this lady called Danielle Nichols. We'd never met each other. You'll love her. I thought, oh, God, she's just like you. I thought, that's even worse. And then, <laughs> and then, and then we, we met each other for one hour before our first we show. Did, and we, we are, we're almost like a boy band in the sense that we're just completely put together. But we're such And we're like mates. a marriage in the sense that we both completely disagree with each other. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no sex. <laughs> <laughs> Not after the first year, anyway. <laughs> you look absolutely brilliant. No, Thank you know we. Do you know, Jane? We're having we're having as good a time as you think we're having. Oh, sorry. Oh my god. Sorry. Oh my. Sorry. God. Oh my You've had a Judy Finnegan Wardrobe moment. malfunction there. The dads I did are a going, Judy Finnegan. The, the dads are going, bloody hell, get that old catch up, Eileen. Replay that, replay sorry. that. Sorry, it was because I coughed. Because <laughs> you coughed, you came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be clipped, isn't it? So, 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 Jane, what were you saying? Did you say the England match? The ears match? The England match? The England match? Oh, did I see the no. I have to be we honest, got, no. We got beat. Oh, against Brazil, was it? Yes. Well, we were going to get beat, weren't we, against Brazil? Am I allowed to say that? No, you're yeah. not allowed to say that. They're, you? they're better than us. <laughs> they're better no, than us. No, Brazil. Are Only because she's she's because she's they're renowned to be really good. No, it's not I, like we got beat by someone rubbish. Is what I'm I saying. I will tell you. I will tell you. In terms of football, she's got a Brit, Dean Holden, and she's got a Brazilian as well. Oh God! Uh, exactly, Jane. Too much info. Don't overshare. Too much information. Well, well, I didn't even know, but now she's admitted it. Anyway, uh, yeah. Jane. Can I ask you a question? How it's much, style of how, much do you, how much do you love talking to us on a Saturday night? Because can I tell you something? We literally get paid to be here, and we love it. We we're, do. We're having a great time, and sometimes there's great callers, sometimes there's awful callers, but there's always callers, and they're always interesting. Well, it's only the second time I ran. I ran last night about the good news about. Catherine. About Kate, yeah. So she's principally yeah. interested in me. Thank you, Jane. Oh, okay. No, because she phoned last night when it was actually my show. So Thank you very Woody much for your call, Woody is in Jane. Glasgow. Woody, you on Talk TV. Hello. Hello, how, how are, are you? you? How are you? Yes. I love you, but Andre, good man. Hey. Just, before we go into anything, right, I want to say anything. The day was the anniversary of my... We still won, uh, kid, oh. 35 years. Yep. OK. Right, right. And, Andre, you, you know what I'm talking about? Did you name right. your baby? Yeah, yeah. Aye, what, what did you call your baby? Stacey. Stacey. Ah, I was, I was up there a day, and, uh, well, yesterday, obviously, we were in a new day, the 23rd, and uh, I put flowers in, and yeah. I'm so happy. OK. Right, but, eh... Uh, I know, Daniel, you're the same, same thing, right? You do this, right? Every year. Yep, I do. And, uh, on a birthday, yeah. Right? But can I, can I go back on to what I want to speak about? Andre? Of course. Yeah, that's right. Of course. You're, you're a good... Uh, you're a lot of right, and I love it, right? But can I ask you, what the hell are you going to do about the Scottish SNP? I, 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 so, first of all... I'm a walker, so as you can imagine, my family are Scottish by descent a long time ago. You know something? Here is the bit that Scotland doesn't understand, as far as I'm concerned, certainly young people in Scotland. The English, the Welsh and the Northern Irish love Scotland and think it's an equal part. I mean, yes, OK, the vast majority of people in the United Kingdom are English, but actually we see Scotland as an equal partner. OK, the okay. English... I, listen, listen, I've got family. It stays in England. I know that. But what, I'm, what I want to say is, 
Yeah. What would I do personally? What would I do personally? I would abolish all devolved assemblies, and I would say that I'm sorry. There will be no Scottish synod. There will be no sorry. There will be no Welsh synod. There will be no Scottish Parliament. There will be no Northern Irish Assembly. There will be no Government of London. There will be no Government of Greater Manchester. There will be no West Midlands. There will be nothing. There will be a United Kingdom together. If you want to be a member Order. of the United Order. Kingdom, Order. Order. stay. Order. Otherwise, go. I agree with you 100 percent Daniel, listen, and I bet, I bet you, you, you know this better than me, right? Why is this SNP what I say we can't say anything uh, 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 what we want to say? We can say anything. But if you say it in Glasgow or Scotland, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, they're gonna get a jail. Well I think I think look, I think I can answer that. The, the reality is that there is a situation in which the SNP will just will just claim to speak for Scotland in a way that's not realistic. But but what we have to say is we have to say, look, you know, I'm not a Londoner, I'm not a Greater Manchester or whatever it is, or a or Northwesterner, or uh, or any of these things. I'm not proud of my country. I don't love my country. My country is England. I love the United Kingdom. And I think we need to be much better at saying that. We need to, and I'll tell you something, we made a big mistake and people are all gonna complain when I say this, we forgot. We said the Northern Irish, oh, yawn, yawn, yawn. They were moaning too much. The Northern Irish were right during that Brexit negotiation. The integrity of the United Kingdom was the most important thing. I don't love my country, England, I love the United Kingdom, and I think we must be much better at saying that, not dividing up uh, from London to Scotland to the Northwest to whatever. More next. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did the fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
to Talk Radio or Talk TV. I'm Danielle Nichols. This is Andre Walker, and this is the last part of the show. So if you want to be a part of it, you're going to have to pick up your phone. Pretty Childe. It's 0344 499 1000. 0344 499 1000. I want to talk about this mug. Right. This so mug he's was... found this cup in the green room, yeah. right? And yeah. it's. And he's made it his mission to find out no, what it no, means. No, what happened was... When you did find out what it means, I was no less amused than when you found our the cup producer, in the first place. So our producer said that th this mug had been left in the green room. Where, where, where did it come from? It says, Queen's Wayfarers established 1580. And he said, without looking at your phone, do you know what this is? And I said, well, I don't know what a wayfarer is, but que clearly the Queen's thing in 1580 has got to be related to the Spanish Armada. I think this clearly. is a joke. I think So I've now discovered a wayfarer is somebody who owns a small boat. So if anybody knows... Who are the Queen's, Queen's wayfarers? wayfarers? Obviously, I think it's a group of ordinary blokes on the South Coast who own little yachts, who have made a joke and left this in our green room. Whoever you are, the like joke is know. well made and we've kind of half got it. We think that you're hobbyists who are making a joke about the Armada. Is who that, are you? Is that true? Andre Kerr's. She doesn't. I couldn't. And neither, neither does the rest of the building. Couldn't care less. Nobody, nobody else finds the joke funny because it's not funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was interesting. Do you know what I'm going to do? Like the do you know what I'm going to do, Queen's Wayfarers? I'm going to take this home. I'm going to treasure this. I'm going to love this. And then you're going to find out it belongs to someone and you've stolen it. Well, that's a fair point. <laughs> that's, a, that's a reasonable point, Tom Newton. Don't yeah, probably, maybe you it. should just put it back where you found it. <laughs> probably Because didn't. it maybe wasn't lost no, in no, the first place, No, I think it was place, Tom okay? Newton Dunn's. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. And I'd be very upset to offend him. Put it back uh, where Jane you found it. Jane is in Manchester. Jane, you're on Talk TV. Just don't care anymore. Jane, you're on Talk TV. Come on, Jane. Hello. Hello. Hi. I am just um, want to ask you about the England shirt. Oh yes. Yeah. No, I think it's ridiculous. So that was the whole thing. Yeah. That was the no, whole thing. So, so, so okay. No, no, so stop, Nike, no, Nike stop, have designed stop, an no, England stop, shirt. No, stop. Aside from the fact stop, it's a hundred and thirty quid. Jane. 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 Danielle was expecting you to say a bit more yeah, about sorry, the question. Sorry, let me. So, think. so Jane, if if that completes, no, Jane, no, Jane, stop for a second. Okay, if okay. if I want you to talk about the England shirt, is completes your question, then Danielle will answer it. If you have anything more to say, you're welcome to offer it now. Otherwise, Danielle will answer. <laughs> Can I speak then? Yeah. 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 Right. Well, the England shirt. Okay. All our, all our heritage, all our monuments and everything have been trashed by people that are disagreeing with it. What would happen if we, we annihilated Nike? You know, if we disagree with things. Isn't what Nike like an it? American company as well? Like, where do they... What, why are they getting involved in our flag? <laughs> don't, don't ask me and don't... Can I, can I offer the left-wing answer? Go on. The left-wing answer is that England shirts have not always contained the cross of St George, and actually, on some oh, occasions in the past... Don't, don't, don't. We all know that old theory. Well, I'm, I'm willing Go to on, say... Go on, in some occasions in the past... Uh, on some occasions it. in the past it has been recoloured. Um, oh, has it? The argument this time is about the bisexual uh, flag that's been put on it. Right. Nike claim they didn't know... Nike claim they didn't know it was the bisexual flag. Do you know, do you know what I think it really? is? I think it's trolling of decent people. I'll tell you what I'm going to say to you, Jane. I'm going to say yes. to you that in reality, I spoke to you once about sports bras, one of my favourite conversations ever. But actually, oh. the, fact, the fact, on a serious note, that sports bras now were being modelled by trans people. Do you know something... Let the gay people be gay. Let the trans people be trans. Let the bisexual people be bisexual. And let football fans who are Scottish support Scotland and football fans who support England support England and let them all have their own livery. There is no harm in that. Where it becomes abusive is when you're saying you don't have the right to do that. Mm. Like when you see with Edward Coulston, not a slave trader, 
who has his statue ripped down for being a slave trader. When our flag is ripped down, it doesn't mean you can't fly your own flag. It means you're just being abusive to us. Your husband has spent a lot of time supporting football in this country, and actually, I think he should be proud of that record, not ripping down our flag. Yeah, well, listen, my brother's gay, majority of my friends are gay. I love everybody. I have no animosity to anybody. But this world has just gone crazy. I don't no, get it, Danielle. So, so thank you, Jane. I would if I don't get do it, it to, to get the... Publicity. Yeah, I think, I think it's a publicity stunt. Yeah. Where, which, this one. Oh, hi, hi, Danielle and Andre. We've got a nice message from Dee in Blackpool. Hi, Danielle and Andre. I agree, you've got a great show. I listen to Talk Sport all the time and I part heard an interview with Dean Holden which is my husband, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, Stevie G's helper. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering... No, no, read that again. Read, no, no, you didn't give that enough. You didn't That's give funny. that enough. I'll read it. I agree that you've got a great show. I listen to talk sport all the time. And part I heard an interview with Dean Holden. He's Stevie G's helper. Helper. And a wonderful husband to Danielle. No. Yeah, so he, he's Stevie G, Stephen Gerrard's helper first. Yes. Husband second. But D is saying <laughs> that he wondered if it was my husband. You've just confirmed it. Keep up the good work from D. Thank you very much, D. Do you know, yes. do you know, do you know something? Do you know 24 something? 24 years, 25 years we've been together. Dean, uh, Dean, 18 Dean, married. Dean Holden. 18 married. Dean Holden is one of the best blokes I've ever met, but I will tell you one thing about him that made me laugh. When I when we went to Cheltenham together and we had a couple of drinks, um, literally he's like he's like, You're a Tory. He goes, No, he goes, he goes, You're a Tory, like working guys shouldn't be Tories. Right? He doesn't talk like and that. And he didn't give the slightest toss that I was a conservative. But when he met a couple of guys that he thought were working class from Salford, the area that he was from. <laughs> and he th and they went, we're thinking of voting Conservative. He was like, no, that's a disgrace. You're letting down your gang. You're letting down he was gang. only doing that to amuse you. He is, he is very much of the view that people like me are deluded middle class and toffs. <laughs> Who vote Conservative? He is not. But if you let had me just make this very clear. These are his opinions, and let's just keep him out of this, right? Okay. Right. Let's do the time warp. It's Damien in Cheshire. Damien, uh, you're on Talk TV. Um. Good. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Um. Thank you for the entertaining show, and I'd like to say first of all that um, I used to watch Andre's YouTube show, and I think he's very good. Oh, thank uh -huh. you so much. Um, I, I, me, I'm, I'm very common sense and I'm a working class chap and I don't really understand why all the talking points, you know, from the governments about the migration problem, they could solve it tomorrow and, and, and the truth is they're, they're just choosing not to do it. It feels um, that way, doesn't it? Well, 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 to be fair, what, what I don't understand is why the Prime Minister day one didn't get the military into the English Channel to stop the boats arriving. No, that, actually, Damien, to be fair, they have done that. The problem is the military are instructed to principally deal with this as a humanitarian issue. Why that's important is, if you tell the Royal Navy these guys are invading, take action to stop them, they'll take action to stop them. If you say this is a humanitarian aid mission, then what they will do is drag them out of the dinghies, give them food and sell them to Kent, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but, yeah, but it, when you look at the when you look at the satellite navigation of where the boat is, it's like a, it's like we're literally collecting them from French waters. Yes, we are. Yeah, no, we are. We are doing. Um, so just I to, asked you this: Why can't we just Im immediately process them? So, why can't so, we literally ship them back? So, so actually, actually, the real answer to that is very simple. We have got a policy in this country that if you do not have any papers, we do not deport you to any country because we don't know what country. We officially uh. don't know which country you've come from. Now, what Damien's talking about is this. We are tracking them from France. We know they're coming from France. And actually what happens is to save them and protect them, the French Coast Guard who say you have a legal right to leave France, that is your legal right, uh, will we'll, we'll put, put them into international waters and then at international waters, the Royal Navy will pick them up, 
who have been told that there is an international aid effort to ensure that they don't sink and die. So what they'll do right. is, so, so what will happen is the dinghies will be escorted by the French Navy into international waters for their own protection. The Royal Navy will then escort them into UK waters. And when they're in UK waters, normally the lifeboat, the Royal Lifeboat Agency, whatever they're called, will then pick them up and take them to, uh, to, to Dover. What they will then do is they will say two things. They will say, first of all, that they would like to claim political asylum in the United Kingdom. They know that won't be approved. But then they will secondarily say they're also modern slaves. A modern slave is that the cost of the transport, £10,000, is actually something they are now legally required to pay back in the United Kingdom. So they now have two claims to remain in the United Kingdom. If you think you can stop that th under our current system, you are very much mistaken. Damien, I'll give you 30 seconds, then we're going to go. Um, I would say that that policy needs to change. Um, I would it, say... It's not, it, it's, not, it's not rocket science that should have been done day one, um, uh, and that, that's my sense on it. I, I'm a kind person. I'm a generous person, 